Now we do have some wins of winter news, as you said. So I have a piece and you have a piece and we're going to kind of bring them both up. The one I have was something that actually came out a couple of months ago, but remember it was when I jacked my back up, so we didn't record as much and it was kind of just an off the wall thing. So we're going to bring it up now because it could have a little more validity. So I'll toss it to you, Jimmy, first. Yeah, so uh, the, the Winds of Winter news I had, actually, uh, I saw it on a, another creator's channel, and he's in the community. It's the Dragon Demands, who does a lot of updates about behind-the-scenes stuff on House of the Dragon, and did a lot of breakdowns of why the show was going off the rails, you know, way before Season 8, which uh, I think we can look back and appreciate. But uh, he made a video saying why the Winds of Winter release date is 2024, and Gurm paused all other tie-in books. And I specifically wanted to call out the post from... Uh, Ilio, which I always struggle with that name, on the uh, Song of Ice and Fire uh, forums. And the post goes like this. That was the initial pitch we had for a book. And, and just so you know, they're talking about um, the who's who of Westeros, which is kind of like another world book that they're talking about doing and really highlighting a bunch of different characters. And someone kind of asked uh, Ilio and tagged him and said, hey, what's going on with that book? Like, when can we expect that printed or put into the world app? And his response was this. That was the initial pitch we had for a book when they wanted us to write something. But when HBO picking up House of the Dragon, the publisher pivoted to us doing Rise of the Dragon. This idea was that it would be an abridged, heavily illustrated character guide or something like that was the notion. But admittedly, 10 Speed Press had some reservations about that. Now, this is the big part. So what I can say is that it's certainly what we think we may end up working on next. Right now, because of various timelines, the Winds of Winter House of the Dragon Season 2, it's a topic we'll be revisiting next year. Like if George gets the Winds of Winter out, the character guide might make more sense. Or if he also instead gets a second volume of Fire and Blood, maybe we'll just leap straight uh, into the follow-up to Rise of the Dragon. It would give us a much longer lead time to get together for art for the project, which is a huge pain point towards the end. So, you know, there, there's a lot going on there, and he's really talking mostly about his next project, where, of course, they helped with Rise of the Dragon and whatnot and, uh, and all that good stuff. But he's kind of saying that everything's been put on pause for the potential that in the next year, if George were to get Winds of Winter out or Fire and Blood too, which I kind of find interesting, because like George has never updated the blog saying that he's been working on Fire and Blood too, and I know that he gets help from that from his assistants. But really, the story here is the winds of winter, especially knowing how much progress George has made since 2020 on the books. You know, we think about that. We estimated what 75, 85 percent of this book is probably finished. Yeah, so, it's gotta be. So the fact that all these side projects are kind of on pause waiting to see if something were to come out in the next year, because then they might have to rewrite some stuff or maybe the books would make more sense. They're kind of waiting for their next step from George. So it, what this really sounds like is that it's been put on hold because within the next year, either fire and blood two or winds of winter would be released. And I, I really don't think George has been working on fire and blood two based on his updates, uh, which he was pretty upfront about him working on fire and blood one, as we remember back in the day from his, not a blog and in various interviews, Matt, I think my, what is it? It's been five or six year prediction. Been saying it. November, 2024 was always my, my go-to date. And it's looking better and better every month. I, I like this. This is a, and we, you know, we don't, we don't want to say it's, confirmed winds of winter news or anything like that but it's certainly something to take note of because this is someone that is in the circle that is you know working hand in hand with publishing stuff in the universe and is saying hey we're putting this on pause because we need to see which way we're going to be going because the who's who guide might be the way to go um you know uh if winds of winter were to come out so it certainly isn't any sort of confirmation or anything but just another nudge into a more positive direction for the winds of winter's future uh especially with all the updates that we had been getting from george and in his recent uh blog you know he did say that this was yeah, i'll be working on winds of winter and the writing strike doesn't affect that and he's not doing any writing on house of the dragon or any of those other shows so I, matt i'm feeling a little tingle i like i'm with you because yeah i this might be the rare instance where the writer strike helps you know we talked about this last the last two weeks is the writer strike going to help george or hurt george because <laughs> is he gonna have to pick up some of the slack that these writers aren't doing for a night of the seven kingdoms because just because the writers are on strike doesn't mean that showrunners and other people aren't gonna have to you know keep writing it right mm -hmm. um and then you know we we talked about 
you know, winds of winter, how much closer is he getting? All he keeps saying is that he's, you know, he's, he's working on it. There was that other show that he had that got that, uh, he pitched, I think, to Peacock or something like Wild Cards or you know, yeah, Wild Cards others. and did not. And they they said no. So okay, well, no, he's not. He doesn't have to. His time get picked up over there. You know, it just feels closer every time we get an update. And I said this before 2020 for a long time. If you go back and you read all of his updates, it was always this like, "Woe is me, mm-hmm. I'm sorry." And then COVID hit, and he like locked himself away in his cave or you know his mountain, as he says, he's like a cabin in the woods out there and he started writing and suddenly every time he talks about wins he feels way more optimistic so i mean it's obvious just in his writing that he's he 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 is much closer now this was this was go ahead go ahead yeah i was gonna say yeah and you know we were getting like specific information like i'm wrapping up the last chapters for this and that and i'm done with two more povs and yada 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 so uh, real progress and all projects being held for a possible Winds of Winter or Fire and Blood 2 release. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty optimistic right now. <laughs> well, this is kind of this is kind of the other interesting piece. And this came out a couple uh, weeks ago, I guess. But we, ne- we didn't uh, talk about it. And it was some artwork, right, that came out. And this is a potential Winds of Winter cover art now the interesting thing here is that the artist who created it um is a guy whose name i'm definitely going uh to butcher i think it's eric altona altonos something like that anyway and he has done some official artwork in like the rise of the dragon book which is you know the basically world of ice and fire version of house of the dragon so this artwork here is art that he did and it it could just be fan art there's nothing specific you know about it but it's just interesting that here's somebody who has worked with george in some official capacity before or you know elia and linda the people who make the a lot of the artwork and they run the wiki and stuff like that too um i mean clearly he's worked with some capacity he's working obviously with them if they're taking some of his official his work and it's officially going into books that's being sold and here he is creating what he thinks could be a cover right that doesn't mean it, it is going to be the cover doesn't mean it's not but it did make some waves uh, a couple a couple weeks ago yeah and you just start piecing these little things together and you know and, and maybe this is just a harmless uh dream for this artist right like uh, i hope it looks great to, to me cover looks fantastic i um, mean and for those who are listening i didn't know this until like last year but the famous winds of winter cover with the horn on it is actually just a fan art that someone uploaded to the wiki so if you've ever seen the horn of winter cover it's not real uh right. george has even used it but it's not the real cover it's just a stand-in it's kind of funny i mean it's almost it's famous at this point it might be the most famous cover of all the books yeah it might be to be honest we, uh, yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of covers to the books there's a lot of different versions i think the ones that most people recognize are the sort of mass media prints although now they don't even print those i don't think they print those those covers anymore because now they're all they all are like the hbo ones right so i think it's like yeah. a dance with dragons the you know the original one is the white book that looks like that you know the green uh, storm of swords and like the orange Mm -hmm. clash of king or yellow clash of kings and the the blue like the very the blue with the dagger game of thrones book but now they're all changed to the hbo ones because they you know they want they want that big that big tag on it so this looks like it would fit or if you're a psychopath like me you have the subterranean press editions uh which right cost more in my car but I'm glad I have them. <laughs> have you ever have you ever have you ever found any of the really old ones? Because there's a lot of older mm. versions with the old. I mean, my sub press Game of Thrones editions from 2000, maybe. Yeah. And it's signed by George and numbered and lettered. And uh, I also have a first edition uh, Storm of Swords hardback. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen the Clash of Kings original cover, but it is really cool. The the, the ones with like the old people on it are pretty, are pretty cool. Yeah. Like it looks like. Yeah, I'm gonna reference something here. They kind of reminds me of some of the Wheel of Time covers. Oh, I know. Why, I just why you gotta I, do that I to just, me? I just I just ruined the moment. I, I was all in, and then <clears throat> now I'm out. 
like this like this clash of kings here i'll get it pulled up here this like yellow and red yeah it's yellow red and it looks like cersei is there and then maybe maybe it's supposed to be joffrey on the throne uh it, i'm not saying it's it's necessarily <laughs> perfect but i really like those original covers and for the folks who have not seen the uh foreign covers i also implore you to go check out some of those the german ones oh my god some of those crazy. are crazy some of the some of those have like such are you oh no, you're telling me that this doesn't remind I, you know you read a lot more fantasy books than i do but you're telling me that doesn't this doesn't remind you of some of the wheel of time books Oh no! Yeah, the covers. Yeah, it's that pulp yeah. fantasy look that I absolutely right. adore. Like I couldn't love it anymore. Um, I I wish that fantasy. No, that's that's books... that's Melisandre and Stannis. Oh, that is. It's Melisandre and Stannis. And, and then I assume the person Davos. Is that supposed to be Davos? I could see it being Davos. Yeah, it doesn't. I can't count his fingers. <laughs> Yeah. Or I, I should say, can't see how long his fingers are, but he is wearing gloves, which Davos wears. Um, I, yeah, I don't so know. Cool. I like the old fantasy pulp covers, and I wish that books nowadays, especially fantasy and sci-fi books, would lean back into their origins and quit putting out these stupid, like, lit fit covers with just the author name. I hate that. It drives yeah. me crazy, dude.